Last episode, we expanded our mob farm, enchanted our gear, and built a small iron farm. Today, we dig a big hole, we fall down a big hole, run away from a screaming thing in a hole, and build a working elevator alongside an automated drill to upgrade our mining operation. But before we do any of that, it's about time we make a small but major upgrade to our storage system here by adding one of these, a drawer controller, and it should be fairly easy to make. There we go, that's our drawer controller, and what we can now do is basically put this somewhere where it's attached to all of these drawers. What we might need to do is actually hide some drawers in the walls that are locked just to make sure everything's connected but then we can literally just dump our inventory inside this and it will sort it all out for us so what i'm going to do is put the drawer controller up here and then now in theory if we just take say a couple of these things when we double right click on there it'll actually auto sort them out for us and it will do that for any linked drawers we've got so i guess the next task is to actually make sure that we are linking up all of these drawers but what we can do is just put a blank drawer in the corner here and make sure we lock it and then when we put this drawer back these ones here are all now connected as well and we've just got to do that around all the different corners and there we go i think we're done now so this drawer here is actually connected to both floors of storage so we should be able to offload a lot quicker than we have been able to so far. I should have done that a long time ago, really, let's be honest. But now that's done, it's time to have some fun. And for this fun to happen, we need to make ourselves a buttload of drills. Specifically, these drills here. And, well, that's made me 10. I need a lot more than that. So let's quickly make some more andesite alloy. And while that mixes up, we also need to make one of these, which is even easier than I expected it to be. Do we have any wool? We do. And this is a rope pulley, which is going to come in very handy in a little while. But my plan for today is to carry on where we left off on the last episode and basically put in a mine shaft. I want to build a big old mine shaft up there. We'll have a pulley system and a lift system to take us up and down. But first, we need to dig the shaft. And that's where all these drills are going to come in. There we go. That's the last of the drills we need. And I think with that, we have everything we need to go drill a great big hole. So if we just head back to the top of this hill... Ugh, disgusting weather for it though, eh? And what I'm going to do is just put down all 25 drills here. Preferably not this way up. We'll stick a bunch of chests on the back of them. And then we're going to put the rope pulley in there, just a couple of blocks above. Then we'll glue all of this together. Easy as that. And now we just need to give this a little bit of power. There we go. It's doing its thing. And that should, in theory, just keep on going down all the way to bedrock. And not only that, it's also going to be collecting up everything it digs into these chests here. How cool is that? So we're going to get a buttload of resources and a massive hole. Let's just watch this thing dig. Well, it took until halfway through the next day, but we have made it to the bottom. And what I have learned from that is that when we put a lift in here, it's going to, have to be a lot faster than this. But what we need to do now is bring this back up. And I think the easiest way to do that is probably just going to be to stick a gearbox in there. Yeah, this is definitely going to need to be faster when it's a lift. Although rumor has it, can't you actually climb on these ropes? Let's have a look. No, no, you can't. Well... I mean, you've got to test these things, right? Although, thinking about it, maybe you can only climb up and down the rope when it's not actually moving. That would probably make more sense, wouldn't it? Let's just hope it's bringing my body up. Well, it doesn't look like a body is attached to that. Dang it. Got myself in a bit of a pickle here. Oh, uh... That was... That was weird. We kind of got to the top and then glitched out back to where the body was? I mean, it made it easy to get my stuff, but I don't really know what happened there. Very strange, but look at all the resources we've got. How cool is that? And there's a little bit in there, and some more in there as well. Well, that's very cool. Now we just got to wait half hour to get back to the top again. Ugh, I really need to speed this up. And it looks like we're coming up on a cave as well. This could be interesting. Oh, well, there's definitely some stuff. This is really not going to plan, is it? And look at me, I look like a pin cushion. Well, it's made it back to the top for a second time. Excellent. Let's quickly sleep. And we can just clear all this away for now. And we should go dump all this in our storage as well. I'd say resource-wise, we did quite well out of that. And hopefully, if we just tap on the drawers here... Look at that. Entire inventory clear in an instant. Right, that's phase one complete and all cleared up. And we have a lovely shaft. Now it's time for phase two. and We need to build an elevator. For that, there's a few things we're going to need. The main one being an elevator pulley, which is basically like a more advanced version of the rope pulley. So let's make some brass casings, a block of kelp, and an iron sheet. So that's the pulley. But we also need some other bits and bobs to get this working. So we're going to need some contraption controls, which is easy enough. We need some redstone links. And then we need some redstone controllers. But we'll get into what all these things are going to do and how they're going to work in a little bit. For now, I think what we want to do is go back up to the top of the mountain and build ourselves some kind of a structure and also a way to feed power into it. That means more water wheels. You love it. One of these days I will build a power plant, I promise. Just probably not over here. Now, I think we've got everything I need, but I've not built an elevator before. So I'm going to do a quick little test over here first. And I do know a couple of things about the elevator. So if we just put the pulley at the top up 
there. And then we'll just make a little elevator here for now. That is that is literally going to be our entire elevator, just for our testing purposes. And then we'll stick that together. And then this is where the redstone contacts come in. So if, for example, we replace this block here with a redstone contact, and then we put another redstone contact there, and then right-click this. Is this what we do? Do we, do we right-click this? Do we do it with a wrench? No, nope, that's just rotating around. Oh, maybe we need to actually give it some power first. That'll probably help. Now, if we click this, there we go. We've created an elevator. And you'll see this block here has changed. And this is basically a floor. I think that's how this counts at. So if we just say, for example, let's turn off caps lock. Uh, let's go with top floor. And then if we just put another one here and call this bottom floor. And then if we stick a button on there and press it, it should. Look at that. So that actually pulls the elevator up to that floor. And if we power this one, it will call it back down to that floor. And that's all very cool, but I think it can get a little bit better. So if we disassemble it again, that means we can add more stuff to this. And if we add contraption controls and make sure they're stuck to the elevator like that. And now if we right click that, we should have controls here. Look at that. So if we scroll, we can scroll, go to the top floor, scroll, go to the bottom floor. And that's how our elevator is going to work. Oh, that's amazing. That's very cool. So now we know how it works. I guess we should quickly take all this down and figure out how we're going to do something that looks good over there. So for this build, I'm going to make use of these supports again from McCaw's Bridges, because I think these are going to work really well to make a nice frame that's going to kind of hold the lift over the shaft. But we also need to think about power as well. So I'm thinking we could put in a vertical belt here that would just sort of run up to the top of the tower, and then we'll put some water wheels or something over here. But we'll worry about that later. For now, let's see if we can get something looking good up here. Maybe we could put one of the stairs in just to kind of angle it in a bit so it's not too sort of boxy, I guess. Is that going to work? And then we can kind of attach the elevator pulley. I guess it'd go on that slot there, wouldn't it? So let's just keep this going across for now. So there, I think, is where it should sit. Is that in the middle? Looks about right. Then I guess the question is, is putting a belt in here going to look all right? Oh, actually, that looks well cool. Yeah, I think that shape works well. Maybe it needs, like, a beam across the top. So a beam across the top here, I think, is going to work nicely. I think for safety reasons, I'm just going to quickly fill in this hole a little bit. I think under here, what we need to do, first off, is we need to actually put this the right way round. Like that. That's better. Now it's actually going to turn when it's powered. And maybe we should try and make it look a little bit more attached as well. Oh, yeah, I like that. Nice and simple. So now to get this powered, and this should be fairly straightforward... There we go. And we do, of course, want to make sure that we're speeding this up as well, because that's going to be incredibly slow otherwise. But I do have one of these, which is going to help a lot. This is a rotational speed controller. So if we just add a few gearboxes here, stick a shaft on that one there, and then two vertical gearboxes. Look at that. It's all powered. It's all working. Looking lovely. Although we do need to make it look a lot better down here for sure. You know what? I think I'm going to stick a couple of flywheels on this as well because it's just going to give it a little bit of color at the top there. And it's, well, it's a nice spinny thing, isn't it? Let's be honest. So now we've got the basic shell in. I guess we should actually build the uh, the elevator itself, right? So what we're going to do is use these industrial iron blocks with some framed slabs. And we're going to use this for the base of the elevator. And then we're going to use copycat steps around the outside, I think, just to make it look a little bit wider. But they're very cool. They're just like weird little half blocks, and I like that. And then we'll use some girders to give it some height. And now this is where the copycat panels are going to work out really well. So if I stick some of these on here, and I'll just show you what the difference is between these panels here as well. So these ones here, they're not trapdoors, so you can't sort of flap them up and down. They're literally just flat panels, which is one thing. But more importantly, with these trapdoors, you can only use full blocks for texture, whereas with these, I can literally apply bars. So now instead of the usual problem of having a fence where it's kind of on the edge of a block like that we can actually have it pushed right up against this edge here and not only that but in create we have these awesome bars which are andesite bars so i think that's what we're going to use all around the outside of the elevator here just to make it look like a metal cage yeah that looks awesome love it and i think on top here we'll just use more slabs again like we did with the floor and once again we'll use these blocks here We'll put a solid one in the middle for the actual elevator to connect onto. And then we need to make sure we've got space here for one of those redstone links. So let's just stick a block there. No, it's not a redstone link. It's a redstone contact. And this is, of course, what's going to tell the elevator what floor it is on. Then we'll put the receiving one there. And now they're lit up. That tells us that they are indeed connected. And the last couple of bits we need are a door, which I think we're going to put probably... 
like that. And of course, the elevator controls. So let's get all of this glued together. I think I've got it all connected, but there's only really one way to check. So let's jump up here and right click that. So that is displaying. That is good. And now we can run around the back here and give this place a name. So we'll just call this surface. And that should display that name on here. Look at that. Beautiful. So apart from the fact we haven't got any other floors to go to, that is looking pretty good. Although I think it might actually need a lip at the top here like it's got at the bottom. It looks a little bit weird right now. So let's just disconnect that again. So now we're back in build mode. I can add stuff to it. Although I guess we can only really do that on three sides because, uh, yeah, we've got this connecting beam at the back here. And make sure it's all glued together. And there we go. One elevator. That is looking pretty cool, actually. How's it looking from a distance? Yeah, I think that looks pretty good sat up there. Although we've got a lot of work to do with the landscape around here. So I guess now that's done, the next thing to do is to go down the bottom and actually give the elevator somewhere to go to. And let's make sure we're getting down there nice and safely this time. We'll just use some water. So the first thing I want to do at the bottom here is actually just fill it out a little bit. So this is the bottom of the shaft here, and I think if we... Not that, that's not what I wanted to do, but I think if we do this here, when the elevator comes down, it should actually slot in perfectly with the little step that it's already got. It might not work, but I'm hoping it does. And in theory, if I put that there, that should be in the right place. Uh, I don't know if this is going to work or not. Is that going to call the elevator? No, no, it's not. I think I need to send the elevator down here somehow. Ah, I think I put it in the wrong place. I think I put it back one block and that's probably why it's not connected. So if we put this there, then rotate it the right way. There we go. Ah, see, look, it's changed now. So now it is actually connected up to the elevator at the top. So if we give this a name, such as Deep Slate, and as much as I want to press the button, I just realized we haven't actually sped it up yet. We put in the speed rotational controller, but it's still only going at 16 RPM. And that means it's going to take forever to get down here. So yeah, let's go speed it up before we press the button. So let's quickly go in here. I think I want to put this at 128. And if that feels too slow or too fast, we can always adjust it. So set this to deep slate level, press the button. Well, a couple of problems there. One, it left the floor behind. And two, that is incredibly quick. So let's just quickly call that back. Love how that door opens. Uh, right, let's actually stick the floor to the elevator now. Silly beardy. Let's try that again. Let's just do it from the outside. All right, it's got a floor attached this time. Maybe that's not too fast, you know. I mean, it's still going to take about 15 seconds to get down. But while that is down the bottom, let's do a couple of things at the top here. So if we put some bits in here while the elevator's not here, just like that. The hope is that when the elevator comes back up, it'll all look connected and should be a nice solid floor. And as long as I don't put the elevator back into build mode, it shouldn't break anything. And something else I want here is an elevator call button. So what I'm going to do is just put a block here like this and we're going to stick this on the back and we'll just put double dark oak in there that'll be fine and then we'll put another one here and if we crouch right click it with an empty hand it gives it this little thing that makes it a receiver and now that's got the same signal what that means is anytime this gets redstone signal it's going to power that block there so if we do this and hit the button look at that the elevator should be coming back up and there it is and yes look at that look it does actually all slot in on the floor perfectly Oh, that is amazing. I wasn't sure that would work, you know. So let's actually ride it down and see how fast it is. I'll tell you what, inside the elevator, it doesn't actually feel too fast. But the mineshaft itself looks very, very boring at the moment. And I think I know what I'm going to do about that. And once again, I'm going to be using these frames from McCaws because I think they work well. But if we combine these with some of these, I think we could end up with a nice little frame that sort of runs up the elevator shaft. We'll just put one of these lines in every 10 blocks or so. But this could take a while to actually build up. So I'll bring you back in once we're done. What in the world is that? What? Oh, well, my days are scared the life out of me. Oh. oh. Oh, my God. I did not need that. A screecher soul. Oh, my days. My heart. Oh, diamonds. Hey, are we triggering darkness when we go in here, or was that the screecher that did that to us? Oh, God, there's another screecher. Oh, no. No, no, I'm out. I think what I am going to do, though, is put a stop on the elevator shaft here, just so we can actually get off here and uh, and actually go and explore that when we're when we're not scared. Honestly, don't think I can deal with that right this moment. That was a bit extreme. So hopefully, that should bring the lift up to me. It does. Beautiful. Although, where's the... 
Wow, is our lift shaft that long that it's not showing us the connector at the top? That's weird. Although the door is on the side here, so let's just move this round. I don't really want to add more doors to the elevator. I'm still shaking from that screamy thing. Jeez. Right, onwards and upwards. And we'll have another level in here just at the stone level so we can get andesite and diorite and all that stuff. I think that should work nicely. But we've still got a very long way to go to get this to the top. I think I'm finally done. We've actually made it all the way to the top here. I'm just calling the lift back up. I just love how that slots into the floor there. Oh, too good. But we now have the surface. We have our andesite level so we can go there to get our andesite, diorite and granite and all that sort of stuff. We have our screamy death level. We may or may not go back there. And then, of course, we have our deep slate level as well. So now that's done, it's in and it's working. We just need to make things look nice up here a bit, really, don't we? Well, I've been recording for about 20 minutes, although I wasn't actually recording. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Turns out my recording hard drive was a little bit full, so it just kind of stopped recording. But I have made a little bit of progress. You didn't miss anything too exciting, I'll be honest. It was mainly just me placing these stairs. But they do work well, they look good, and we've got these lovely little platforms as well, so we've got some safety barriers for the lift. But this, of course, hasn't taken me 20 minutes. The meat of the recording was actually me doing some backpack upgrades. So I've upgraded it to a diamond backpack now, which means we've got a lot more space, and I've given myself some upgrades on the side here. And what I've done is I've done the stack upgrades. We've only managed to get them up to gold level. But what that does is it multiplies the number of stacks that can fit in a slot by four. So instead of just one stack of torches in a slot, I can now have four. However, these actually stack. So where I've got multiplied by four there, it's now multiplying that by four again. So we can actually hold 16 stacks in each slot at the moment, which is going to be very, very useful in future. I can tell you that much. The other upgrade I've put on is a feeding upgrade. And this just means as long as I've got food in my backpack, whenever I'm hungry, it'll automatically eat. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that's something I often forget to do on here. So that's going to be a great help to me and may actually prevent me from dying sometimes. But now that the recording's working again, what are we doing next? So I think what I want to do is sort out the side of this mountain here. I do actually want to get a little bit of foliage on it not all the way to the top but i do want to get a bit more sort of grass and dirt around and i of course want to get some leaves and things like that in but mostly i want to actually texture the stone itself and if we look down the bottom here at what we did before we've used a little bit of tough and some of the different types of cut stone and i think they do work really well but i would like to continue that on a little bit further up the mountain and then hopefully once we've done that this will all look a little bit more tied together so let's grab a bunch of stone and a little bit of tough and we're going to make some variants for the stone so what we're going to use is the the rough stone that one works really well so we'll get a few stacks of that and then we want some sanded stone as well and lastly we'll grab a little bit of the trodden stone these seem to be the most natural looking ones that i've found in there so far and some grass but we might need to go get more of that we don't have much i think the first thing we'll do up here is probably get the grass down where we want that because as i say we want it going further up the mountain but not all the way to the top this should help us picture everything a little bit better though then we'll just have less and less grass as we go further up, so just the occasional bit here and there. Yeah, I think that's looking better already. We've barely even started. Right, so I'm just going to smash through and get as much of this done as I can, and I guess I'll bring you back in once we're done. Got a while later, and that's definitely looking a lot better up there, and I think that's tied in quite nicely, although we do still need to add some lights up there. In fact, let's quickly do that now, otherwise we're going to have some big problems when the sun goes down. So let's get more of these funky lamps that we like, and every now and then we'll just get some little lanterns on posts for now i think that'll do just fine lights have been applied and i've even added a nice little fence along the front here well, that whole area up there is looking pretty lovely i must say so we've built ourselves a fancy mine it looks lovely from the top but we actually want to mine in it and for that i want to build myself a kind of a pilot corridor that i can then dig off of and i think the only reasonable way for me to do that would be of course to do it with a contraption and have it kind of go along and auto dig i guess now i have seen various designs of these i've not really looked too closely at them but i get the general gist of what needs to be done so we're just gonna try and give it a go really and see what happens and if it all goes wrong we'll look up a proper design of someone who actually knows what they're doing and i can already tell it's not gonna be the prettiest thing in the world so let's think about this we're gonna want a deployer to place down track in front of the contraption so if we put that there lock him to track we'll have a seat on the back just so we can be comfortable but as well as placing down the track, we also need to pick up the track, and that's what we're going to do here by using a mechanical plow. So when that moves forward, it should pick it up and basically put it in the same storage that these are being grabbed from. So that means as it's going forward, it should just be able to keep placing track. But what if there's nothing to place track on? So we'll put another one of these in, and we'll just give him cobble, and he'll try and place cobble if he can. In fact, this one needs to be a block lower, otherwise he's just going to be placing cobble exactly where we want the track. We certainly don't want that to happen. So let's put the cobble one there and just attach those. 
And now, in theory, we should just be able to stick a whole bunch of drills in front of this, and this should hopefully work. That looks like a reasonable size. We'll attach a few storage chests to the back here, and then we'll just get the whole thing glued together. I think we've got everything, and in theory, this should work. But I have absolutely no idea, so let's do a little test. So we're going to need a minecart to turn this into a contraption. There we go, that's picked up everything. Look at that. Then how do I how do I get it started? Do I do I just give it a little nudge somehow? Let's change the design slightly so I can actually nudge it to get it started. Right, let's try this. Can I get in there and nudge it? I can. And if I sit on here, is that working? It is. So if we just watch this go doing its thing, so that should work fine. Right, let's quickly pick that up. We don't want it destroying our landscape. And now let's go try out this atrocious machine down in the mines. Hopefully it'll work. So let's go down to deep slate level. Love how fast this goes. And it definitely looks a lot better now. We've actually got the beams going past as well. It's a small thing, but it makes me feel much better. And here we are. So this is what we've got so far. This is where we got our diamonds from earlier for our backpack upgrade. But I do want to make this better, bigger and better. So let's just make a little bit of space past these beams and see if we can dig just an absolutely massive tunnel in that direction. So in theory, if we do this and then place that there, place our contraption in there and then power it and then just give it a nudge and hope for the best. Well, it was working okay, but it's run out of momentum, so I think I actually need to be using powered rails down here, which means we're also going to need redstone torches, which means we need another plow and another deployer. Not a problem, though. We can do this. So we need a deployer here, preferably that way round, and he's going to place red torches all over the place. We'll change this guy to use powered rails. We'll put the excess powered rails and torches in there as well, so that should be fine. They should constantly have a supply of those. And we need to scoop up the redstone torches as well, so that should do that. I think, hopefully, that'll actually work this time. So let's power it. Give it a nudge. Oh yes, look at that. That's much better. Definitely working now. And it's going a lot faster too. And we're also getting loads of stuff. Look at that, 12 diamonds already. Excellent. Sadly, that's all we've got time for today. But if you have enjoyed the episode, do hit that subscribe button. It'll be lovely to have you back. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now.